You confessed in an interview that in spite of au pair's growing fame, you were homeless during some time. What made you still believe in yourself when that happened? I can't see myself as homeless like I was sleeping in the street. You know, I always had friends to take care of me, but yeah, I didn't have anywhere to live for a while. But um, I didn't see it as, an, as uh, you know, when looking back at those days, some of my happiest times, you know. I was uh, staying at a friend's house for six, seven months uh, on a couch. and. We, you know, maybe one day he he borrowed like like ten euros from his mom, and we went down to buy some spaghetti and some <laughs> minced meat and made a bolognese, you know, <laughs> and that was like ah, happy happy days. You know. But I don't really um, <clears throat> see it as a bad times, to be honest. It was, mm -hmm. but I, I was happy, mm -hmm. and there was never a question in my mind if that's gonna break me, you know on a mental level that I was like, okay, fuck it, I'd just take a job and be like anyone else, you know. I want, you know, like, I kind of expected it. If you're a musician, I don't expect it. You know, once I've made that decision, I want to be a musician full time. I didn't expect it to, just because I made that de decision, I didn't expect everything to come to me. It took us some, several years until we had uh, anything remotely working, you know. Uh, didn't get any gigs, didn't have anything, no interest. We just did our albums and sat around waiting for the phone to ring, pretty much, which it never did. So uh, it took us six, seven years until we started working. And before that, I was, you know, living, I'm living with my mom for an embarrassingly long time, until I was 23. And, uh, you know, soon enough, obviously, things started going better, and uh, now we're in the middle of a, something that's become our job as well, as something we love to do. And do you consider your career and OPS status as an accomplishment? Was there any revenge to take? No. No. Not really. You know, a lot of people obviously didn't believe in me or in the band, you know. My mom was like, well, I, I think it's good you have your hobby, but you have to understand your hobby <laughs> has to come second place because you have to make a living somehow and maybe you should get an education and that kind of stuff. And I was like, no, this is what I want to do. You know, I think it's, uh, people might think it's stupid and big headed to, to go after a career like being a, a musician, and especially if you're playing original songs that we do. <clears throat> but I think it's stupid to work your life away with something you hate. Mm. Yeah. You know, I think it's uh, it's obvious I was gonna do something I love doing, and I think it speaks for everyone in the band. To be honest, you know, none of us wanna do something they don't like. You know, mm. it's simple. Once you come to terms with that, you know, it's quite simple. After 16 years, Peter left the band beyond the reason why and your possible deception. I'd like to know if you question yourself when this situation, this situation happens. Uh, like, uh, oh, he's leaving, I understand uh, why, maybe he's right. Well, you know, it's up to him, you know. People or anyone, if they want to leave, it's up to them. You know, that won't change the fact that I'm, I, I will still be, be a musician. You know, and with that said, everyone that left the band, none of them continue with music. None of them. They went into other areas of other lines of work, and none of them are playing. I haven't seen anything. So maybe they weren't sure, you know, and then it's okay with me. You know, with Peter leaving, obviously I was a bit upset with the fact because we've been friends for such a long time, and I was a bit worried how would the chemistry be in the band with the new guy. And taking over Peter's position, but he's not a musician, and I am, <laughs> so we can't work together, it's as simple as that, doesn't have anything to do with our friendship or anything, you know, he left the, the music scene, that's just how it is, I'm not sad about it, on the contrary, I'm happy, we're better, we're better off now.
You joke a lot on stage. Uh, Martin has said to us that uh, you are the same in your y everyday life. You look very your everyday life. Yeah, who is Toby? Martin. Martin. Yeah. Yeah, Martin. I saw him uh, in the first. Yeah. That's a good guy. So. <laughs> I hope. Um, but uh, it seems you have a big control over Opus. Do you think that this balance is your strength? I think it's good for us to have some kind of um, uh, distance to, because Opeth is uh, perceived by so many to be such a serious band, and we don't uh, we take ourselves super seriously, you know. And uh, when, to be honest, when it comes to mu the music and everything, I am serious, you know. Right. It's nothing half-hearted, you know, when it comes to the music or the band itself, you know, but when we're on stage, we're doing something we love and we can't help enjoying ourselves, you know. And for me personally, I just got fed up with uh, not enjoying myself 200%, you know, because you have to maintain some type of image, or at least that's the way I thought it was supposed to be done. And I could never go into that type of uh, stage persona where, where you're like, uh, Fuck yeah, you know, you guys fucking rule, yeah, show those fucking horns, you know, that type of thing, you know, I just find it Neanderthal type of stupid monkey business, you know, <laughs> so I, I could never relate to that, to be honest, and I got a bit inspired by uh, Devin Townsend, who's just yeah. he's taking the piss out of the crowd all the time, and himself, and metal, which I think is just funny, you know? and, uh, one day I just said something stupid on stage and people seemed to appreciate it. And now it's <laughs> it's like a, a crew are telling me, oh, you have you have to call, you know, calm down with the talking <laughs> now because we're we're gonna, you know, we're we're gonna be a, you know, there's a curfew today and blah blah blah. But uh, it's become part of the show mm -hmm. to many people. But I don't want it to, to you know, I, I want to have the freedom to to some night to not say anything if I don't feel like it. Yeah. Because a lot of people come to the shows and I hear it like when we're playing, like somebody saying, Mike, crack a joke, yeah. give us a joke. Yeah. You know, I was like, well, that's not exactly what I was yeah. looking for to be cracking jokes. You know? But every, you know, I just want, if I feel like saying that something stupid, I would say it. Okay, so thank you, it was the last question. Thank you.